Do you want to lose all of your home assistant data? Of course not. We all know how important backups are, but most of us still implement suboptimal backup strategies or don't even back up at all. Well, today is the day that you're going to get your home assistant backup sorted out. We're going to quickly go over the 321 backup strategy, and then I'm going to show you how to backup home assistant to a NAS and to Google Drive. So let's dive in. When it comes to backing up your data, all that it really comes down to is how important is your data. If it's really important, then the more copies of the data, the better. But with more copies comes the complexity of keeping all of these copies up to date. And so this is why some people have recommended practices such as the 321 backup strategy. This basically means keeping three copies of your data, keeping two of them on different types of media, with one of the copies being in a different physical location. You also need to consider how often the data changes. Multiple copies are good for disaster recovery, but it might be equally as important to have historical copies so that you can roll back to a previous version of the backup. There are two pieces of functionality in Home Assistant which allow you to create quite robust backup processes. The first thing is core functionality that was introduced a year or two ago, which allows you to backup Home Assistant to network locations rather than just the local disk. Just backing up to your local Home Assistant instance isn't a great deal better than not backing up at all, because if your hard drive fails then you lose both your production data and your backups at the same time. So the ability to backup to a network location was a really needed addition. And the second piece is a community add-on created by Stephen Beechen, which has been around for quite a long time now, but has so many great options for your Home Assistant backups. Before I show you how to set this up, I'm just going to talk through my backup process that I have at the moment. I currently do a full weekly backup, which includes all of the historic center data in Home Assistant. If I'm doing some major changes midweek, then I might kick off a backup manually as well. But other than that, once a week is fine for me. This backup is saved to my NAS, which is a mini PC running TrueNAS scale. If you don't have a NAS solution already, then I highly recommend looking into TrueNAS. It does have a steep learning curve, but once it's all set up, it gives you great resilience and peace of mind. This backup then also goes to Google Drive using the add-on that I'm going to show you in a minute. And then in TrueNAS, I perform weekly snapshots, which are stored for six months. And then I have a second TrueNAS instance, which runs replication once per day, a couple of hours after the Home Assistant backup has taken place. So as you can see, I have multiple copies of the data, various historic versions, including an off-site backup in Google Drive. I do have a couple of weaknesses though that I need to fix. The major one is that my Home Assistant server is in the same place as both TrueNAS instances. They're all in the same room. So if there were to be a fire, then I'd only be left with a Google Drive backup. My plan here is, is probably to move my TrueNAS instance, the second one, into the garage. The other weakness is, is that all of my backups are stored on very similar mediums like an NVMe drive or an SSD. So I don't have any spinning brush backups or any tape backups. But to be honest, I'm totally fine with that. All right, so let's get into the setup. In Home Assistant, if you go to Settings, system and then storage. This is where you can link Home Assistant to a network share. It's quite flexible as you can use either SMB or NFS to connect to your NAS. If you don't have a NAS and you're on a budget, but if you've got a PC that you leave on 24 seven, then you could consider setting up an SMB share and then using this as your NAS instead. You now want to go to your settings and select backup. If you select the three dots in the top right, then you can change your default backup location to the network location you just set up. Great, now you've done that, it's time to install the Google Drive add-on. So go to settings again, add-ons, and then click add-on store in the bottom right. You should now see a list of official add-ons that you can install, but as this one is a community add-on, it won't be in the list. So you need to click the three dots in the top right again and select repositories. And then you need to paste in this link so that it adds the repository to the list. And then you should be able to see the Google Drive add-on in the list of add-ons. Now go ahead and install it and then start the add-on. I also recommend selecting the watchdog and the showing watch bar options. You will now have a new backup menu item on the left where you can configure the add-on and see all of the backups that it's performed so far. As you can see here in my production instance, I have a weekly backup for the past couple of months. And then as I mentioned earlier, I've got some more instances of the backup saved in TrueNAS for longer using snapshots. 
If you go to the Actions button on the top right, it has options to perform an immediate backup as well as manually sync the backups to the cloud. If we now go into the settings, you will see that there is an almost unnecessary amount of options available, so I'm not going to go through all of them, but just the few that I find useful. The first two options is to specify how many days you want to keep your backups for. You can set different days for local versus Google Drive backups. If you're using a free Google Drive account, then you're going to need to consider how big your backups are going to be over time, and then figure out how much quota you've got left out of your free quota for Google Drive. As we've changed the default backup location in Home Assistant to our NAS, this add-on by default is going to automatically use that location. But as you can see here, you can change this to another location instead if you wish. The next most important settings are the number of days between backups and the time that it runs. I have set it to run once per week at 4am. You can also set a password for your backups, which I haven't done, but I probably should do given that one of my backups is in the cloud. My true NAS backups are automatically encrypted anyway, but the one in the cloud is just depending on the security of Google itself. It's a good idea to set these checkboxes here because it allows you to see if something has gone wrong with your backups. I've seen far too many times big companies which have set up their system backups but have inappropriate monitoring and so they don't realise that their backups have been failing for months on end. Once we've gone through the settings I'll show you how to set up a simple automation so that you can get a notification to your phone if something goes wrong. This checkbox creates a persistent notification for you automatically but if you're like me then I completely ignore those in Home Assistant and this is because Home Assistant tends to create persistent notifications all the time telling you that there are new devices available so I would say that doing a phone notification is best instead. Another thing to mention is that you don't actually have to connect this add-on to Google Drive and this is how I set it up originally. If you're happy with your local backup policies then you can just use it to create reliable local backups and disable the Google Drive functionality. Another really cool option is generational backups. This is a more mature backup approach whereby you keep daily, weekly, monthly and yearly backups so that you've got a range of backups available that you can restore from. If you are limited on space or don't really care about certain parts of Home Assistant, then you have the option to not back up the database which includes all of the historic sensor data within Home Assistant. Or you can do partial backups which only back up certain add-ons that you specify. And the final option that I wanted to mention is the option to restrict the upload bandwidth. I think this is really useful because there's a lot of internet connections where you might have a good download speed, but you're normally restricted on your upload speed. For example, I've got 900 megabits down, but I only get 110 up as a maximum. So especially if you do something like online gaming at night, then it might be worth setting this with a bit of a buffer so that you don't run out of connection speed. So as you can see, even though I went through quite a few settings, there are plenty more for you to explore. At this point, we haven't actually given the add-on access to our Google Drive account. So to do this, you can click on the Reauthorize Google Drive under the Actions menu in the top right. If you are doing it the easy way, then just follow the instructions. But this method does come with a compromise. OAuth 2 is used for the authentication, which is tricky to set up. So the developer has created a server which acts as a man in the middle to retrieve the required credentials. So it's really important to know that you're placing some trust in the developer of the add-on, that they have no desire to be malicious. The good news is, is that there is another way of doing it, whereby you can get the credentials yourself. And if you're a frequent Home Assistant user, then my guess is that you're up to the challenge. I'll leave a link in the description to the instructions that the developer has kindly created themselves. So finally, let's set up that all important notification so that you know if your backups start failing. You should have a binary sensor entity called Backup Stale, which will change to a state of problem if there is an issue. I have a very simple automation, which sends an automation to my phone when the state of this sensor changes to problem. Well, that's it for today. So please consider subscribing if you haven't already, liking the video if you enjoyed it, and I hope it's useful and you're going to have secure backups going forwards. Thanks, until next time.